Today's nuclear submarines are multi-role platforms capable of performing a wide variety of open ocean and littoral missions. In this episode, we look at how submarine warfare began and how it's developed over the past century. Although sub-warfare technically began during the American Civil War, when Confederate sub H.L. Hunley became the first military submarine to sink an enemy ship in combat, it was in World War I that submarines began to significantly impact the battle environment. At the start of World War I, the German Navy had less than 30 diesel-powered submarines at its disposal. However, by practicing unrestricted sub-warfare, which meant they sank any vessel, including merchant ships, tankers, and freighters without warning, these subs, or U-boats as they were called, proved a game changer. Patrolling the waters around Great Britain, German U-boats sank an average of two ships per day in the spring of 1915. By early 1917, they had expanded their fleet to include more than 100 operational subs, and were sinking one out of every four ships that attempted to reach England. This immense destruction may have been enough to force Great Britain to surrender, were it not for the fact that he also sank several liners, such as the RMS Lusitania, which resulted in the deaths of thousands of innocent civilians, including 128 Americans, and helped incite the United States into joining the war. During World War II, unrestricted sub-warfare was once again implemented, this time by both the Axis and Allied powers. In the Atlantic, the German Navy pioneered a new sub-warfare tactic by developing highly organized hunting groups known as wolf packs. Working together to launch mass coordinated attacks on Allied convoys, wolf packs created chaos and then overwhelmed their opponents. These German tactics were so effective that American submarines operating in the Pacific began launching coordinated attacks against the Japanese. Of the 314 subs that served in the U.S. Navy, 260 were sent to the Pacific, where they destroyed 55% of all Japanese merchant ships during the course of the war. In the years following World War II, the development of nuclear power ushered in an entirely new era of sub-warfare tactics. Launched in January of 1955, the USS Nautilus was the world's first operational nuclear submarine. And unlike its diesel-powered predecessors, it no longer needed to surface to replenish battery and air reserves. As a result, during Nautilus's shakedown cruise, the sub's team submerged for a distance of more than 1,300 miles, 10 times greater than any previous submerged record. These enhanced capabilities were put to great use during the Cold War, when American nuclear-powered submarines engaged in extensive cat-and-mouse games with the Soviet Union. Our current fleet of nuclear submarines is classed into two types. Boomers, which carry undersea-launched ICBMs, and attack subs, which are designed to pursue surface ships and other submarines. In both cases, they combine the incredible range afforded by nuclear power with the latest in stealth technology. As they have been for more than 100 years, submarines are still a vital component of naval warfare. So how do you think submarines will be used in future conflicts? Push your thoughts and opinions below.